In today's video, I'm going to be going through the question I get regularly, um, and I think it's a pretty important one, especially for our industry. Should you build your complete course first, your or your program, not a course, uh, your coaching program, your fitness program, should you build them all first, um, then sell them, or should you sell your coaching first, then build the programs, right? Now, it is a, a bit of a chicken and egg sort of question, which one comes first, what's the better way to do it? A lot of people have different opinions on this, and I've personally done both formats. So I'll, I wanna speak from experience here. Now, there's a lot of people that'll give you their opinions, right? Opinions are, are amazing these days, everyone has one, even if they're uneducated opinions. So I wanna give you, um, my experience, my, my, my experience of doing both formats. And what I see is the positive and negative of doing the two formats. And ultimately, depending on where you are in your uh, online coaching uh, fitness business, you might be literally starting from scratch and thinking, all right, I've got to build everything first and then I can think about selling it or should I start getting leads first and then build it once I sell. Or alternatively, you might actually be a little bit more down the path. You might have a couple of clients and you're thinking that, like it's generally one of two spots if you get this question. One, you're right at the start, or you're down the path, you've got a couple of clients, and you're not in, exactly in love with your program formatting, or the quality, the design, the layout, the look, the feel, the features, and so you're like, should I pause everything and redevelop and evolve that and then get back into getting more clients, or should I get more clients and try and just do it in the background, right? So it's kind of relevant for two spots depending on where you're at. Now, ultimately, like I said, I've done both. I've done both formats. And realistically, the answer is there is there's positives and negatives to doing both, right? Now, I wouldn't say there's a hard and fast um, do this, right? Everybody's got different, um, I would say personalities, right? Everyone's got different situations, different places where they're at. But I would say this is this is more of a, a personality fit question. Now, some people who are really, um, well, what I'll do is I'll jump up in a helicopter and then I'll jump down and, uh, and you can work it out for yourself. Now, first and foremost, the worst thing that you can do, any business owner can do, is try and go away and build this starship um, incredible program with all of these features and all this sort of stuff and kind of like go into mad scientist mode and go into the lab, block away everyone, spend six months filming all these things, spending all this money, working on all this tech and features and all that sort of stuff and then thinking that after the six months, as soon as I, um, as soon as I launch, everybody's going to come running in. It's the best program in the world and I'm going to be, you know, it's going to go nuts because everyone's going to love it so much. They're going to tell all their friends, so on and so forth. Now, that in theory sounds great, right? And once again, I have done both formats, right? So what I'm talking about is like the worst thing you can do. And I hear it regularly. I, I speak to, to trainers, coaches, and they're like, Chris, um, I have this amazing program, I've built all this stuff, I spent all this money, spent all this time, I couldn't even have another job because I was just putting all energy and focus to this. And now I've launched and I got like one or two clients last week and now I've got no leads and no more clients. Like, what do I do? How do I get leads and clients for this amazing thing that I've built that's so freaking amazing, it cost me so much time and energy. And it's like, well, un unfortunately, that type of person has done done has made the biggest mistake. So if you are at the stage where you're thinking about going down that path or you've started that path, back out of it straight away, right? It is the most dangerous and the worst way to try and build a business because ultimately you are, um, when you first start out a business, ideas are amazing, right? And a lot of business owners fall in love with their ideas, right? Their own ideas. And business is not about us. Your business is not about you. My business is not about me. Our businesses are about our clients, right? What our clients want. And unfortunately, when you first start out, you are kind of, because you don't, haven't spoken to clients, you haven't spoken to prospects, you, you, they haven't 
uh, you may have spoken to some people, but they haven't spoken with their wallets, right? Now, you might speak to some people and go, oh, I've got this great idea and uh, I thought it was awesome. What do you think? And, and people go, oh, yeah, that's great. Your friends will tell you it's great, so on and so forth. But they're not speaking with their wallets, right? Now, someone saying an idea is great is very different to would you pay for it, right? And the ultimate um, clarification is someone actually financially paying for something and going, I see this event of more value than the money, right? I want to buy this thing because I want it more than what it costs, right? So that is the ultimate validation, right? Now, just asking family, friends, or alternatively falling in love with your own ideas is like the worst thing. It's going to set you up for failure, right? Now, I've seen too many people do that. They fall in love with their idea. They think business is about them, not about their clients. They go away, they spend all this money, spend all of this time, and then when they pop up, they think that everything's just going to go nuts. And unfortunately, they hear crickets. And it puts you in a very bad spot because you could be financially in debt and you're also in time debt, right? You've put a lot of time and money into something that potentially may never work and you may have to rip it completely apart because you didn't know what you're doing with your study. You've never done it before, for example, or you've never had someone like a client validated with their money. Now, that's where the concept of people, uh, where people get from of like, sell it, then build it, right? Now, both formats are kind of wrong and both formats are kind of right. I'm not a huge fan of like, sell it, then build it. And I'm not a huge fan of build it, then sell it, right? Now, uh, I've done both and they both have positive and negative, but I would almost say like, the absolute worst thing you can do is like, build a a complete thing, right? Spend months on it, spend heaps of money on it, and then pop up and try and see if you can get some clients once it's completely done. Now, um, some personalities suit going out to market, speaking to leads, speaking to people and saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. It'll probably cost this, would you be in, right? And if someone says yes, you say, okay, you take uh, a down payment or a deposit or whatever and say, okay, I'll, be, I'll come back in three or four weeks and I'll, I'll, I'll have it made. And so that, that way you actually get real data, real information, you get real validation of people paying, right? Now, some personalities suit that. Some other personalities find that extraordinarily um, stressful, right? Now, some people like the stress because it's like then it motivates them because they know that people have paid for it, people want it. And so they don't mind spending long days, long nights building it because they know that they've got the customers there. Um, and some people thrive under that pressure and it motivates them to 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 want to put in the time rather than going every minute of energy putting into it. Mm, are people actually going to want this? And then you overthink it, then you sit back and then you end up not doing it. Other personalities um, find that too stressful, right? And just can't thrive under that. And they prefer to build some stuff and then they don't feel comfortable selling something until they've kind of like got the bones of it, they've got some of it made. Now, whichever one suits your personality, I highly suggest go down that path. But the point being, if you go down the path of build something, then sell it, build part of it, right? And know that once you then go and sell it, you're gonna get more feedback, and then you're gonna tweak it, and you're gonna evolve, and you're gonna improve it. So for example, if you were to build like a 12-week program, right? Build two or three weeks of it, right? Then go out, speak to leads, speak to prospects, sell it, right? They can get started right away. And no, and then you know you've got two weeks of them getting started to the, two, to the end of the two weeks of what you've already built. You've got that time to build out week three, week four, week five, and stay ahead of them, right? Now, once again, it will create a little bit more pressure, but it's positive pressure because you're wanting... Um, every day, oh, is this worth it? Are people actually going to want this, whatever? You will know, right? And so you'll have more motivation, you have more energy because you've already got the clients they're working through, they're giving you feedback, they're telling you what they like, what they don't like. And so when you build out the remainder of it, it will just get better and better and better as the more feedback you get as people going through it. So that's my um, strong strong recommendation. Um, I feel that way you can sell it with more... um, authenticity because you kind of know part of what you've got, but do not go down the other end of the spectrum and build all of it and then pop up and hope to uh, start working on marketing and sales from then, right? Marketing and sales is extremely important because ultimately, if you have an amazing business with an amazing product or service or program and no one buys it, it's a terrible business, right? So marketing and sales is around the part of getting clients 
putting it in their hands and changing lives, right? Because if you don't have that, you don't have clients and then no one uses your product or service, doesn't matter how good it is. So if you're at that point in your stage, in your journey, whether that's starting or you're down the path, you've got a couple of clients and you're wanting to re-evolve it, right? I highly recommend kind of like the middle ground. Do that, you'll be much more successful, a lot less stress and um, a lot more motivated because you know you're on the right path. Hopefully that makes sense. It's Chris from TribeFit. If you've got any questions whatsoever, feel free to, as always, reach out to me, chris at tribefit.co. Or you can hit us on the socials. Um, that's it for me. Bye for now.